Hello everyone. In this video, I'll talk about AWS Backup Restore Testing. I'll talk about how you can automatically test and validate backup recovery processes using Restore Testing. My name is Azad Tenjiev and I'm a Technical Account Manager at AWS. What is AWS Backup Restore Testing? Restore Testing enables your organizations to automatically test and validate their backup recovery processes. The organizations can significantly improve their disaster recovery preparedness and ensure their backup strategies are effective and meet business continuity objectives. You can verify data integrity to identify and address issues proactively so your data can be recovered in the case of a real disaster or data loss event. Restore testing provides evidence that backups are working as intended, which can be important for regulatory compliance and internal policies. And with restore testing, you can validate recovery procedures and catch configuration errors before an actual data loss event takes place. Here's a sample workflow of AWS Backup Restore Testing. First, you create your restore testing plan with testing frequency and recovery point selection. Then you assign resources with the right IAM permissions, retention period before cleaning up, and then you select your resource type. Also, you can use to refine resources selection using the tags. Once you have restore testing in place and jobs are complete, then from the restore testing jobs, you can get the status, validation status, deletion status, creation and completion date details. In addition to that, you can use AWS Backup Compliance Monitoring with the Compliance Framework Controls. This is in particular will, will be helping you to estimate restore times to meet the target RTO for your organizations. Restore testing pricing is based on the number of backups or recovery points that are tested and the amount of storage that is restored for specific resource types. With restore testing, you pay only for what you use with no minimums or upfront commitments. Restore testing evaluation charges are incurred for each backup or recovery point that you successfully orchestrate for restore testing through a restore testing plan. The restore testing storage amount built in a month for a particular resource type is based on the amount of data restored for that resource type for the month. The pricing for restore testing storage is same as the current restore pricing in the well section. Restore storage for control plane integrated clients such as EVS volume snapshots or RDS database snapshots are free. For more details on pricing, please see AWS Backup pricing page. All right, for my demo, I have AWS Backup Restore Testing, and I will be catching Put Restore Validation Result event from my Restore Testing jobs. And using the event for each rule, I will be invoking AWS Lambda function. This Lambda function will be doing a validation test for an EBS volume to confirm that Restore Testing has been done successfully. And once the validation test is complete, I'll be sending notification using Amazon SNS. All right then, let's get to demo. Okay, so let's get started with our AWS Backup Restore Testing. First thing, I need to create Restore Testing Plan. And for that, I'm on my AWS Backup Console and I will go to Restore Testing and I will click on Create Restore Testing Plan. I will give it the, the name of Daily Restore Testing and it's gonna be Daily and it's going to be a local time zone of 2, let's say 15 p.m. And start within one hour is fine for me. And for the recovery point selection, I will use all available vaults, or I can use specific vault. In my case, it's going to be specific vault from the main vault. And I'm fine with the eligible recovery points from the past seven days. And just like that, I can click on Create Restore Testing Plan. All right, once Restore Testing Plan is created, now the next step, we need to assign a resource to it. So I will give it EBS Daily Restore Testing. And I'm fine with the default IAM role. And for the retention period before cleanup, I will be keeping it for some hours so I can do validation check in my case, it's going to be AWS Lambda function, automated validation check. 
So I will keep it for, let's say, um, five hours. And then um, my protected resource will be EBS volume. And it's going to be specific EBS volume type uh, from my main vault. And this is the volume ID that I'm protecting. And for the restore parameters, I can choose the availability zone that I want to restore this in. Also, you can choose the encryption key, but in my case, I will be skipping them. So I will click on assign resources. All right, now I have created a restore testing plan and I have assigned a protected resource to my restore testing plan. For the next step, I need to set up the Lambda functions so I can do validation check on my restore testing. Here's my Lambda function that I use for restore testing validation. I have an event bridge event to trigger this Lambda function. And let's check, take, take a look at that. So basically when the restore job state change is happening for EBS resource type and the status is complete, this Lambda function will get triggered. And basically this Lambda function is checking um, for EBS uh, volume and uh, checking for EBS volume status and state. And when the status and state is available and okay, it will make an API call to AWS backup, put restore validation result call. And with this, we will be uh, check, check, uh, changing the validation status to uh, successful. And once it's successful, I will use Amazon SNS to publish the uh, validation uh, status. And if there's any error here, I'll be catching the error and uh, putting it out there. All right, so um, for the SNS, I also have already SNS topic created and I have my email already subscribed to this SNS topic. So now I'll be waiting for the restore job uh, to complete and to trigger restore testing validation. So my restore testing has successfully completed. And as you can see here, restore testing job one with the ID, if I click on that one, I can see the status is complete and validation status also is successful. Also AWS backup successfully deleted this EBS volume after restore testing and validation both completed, which means my Lambda function had successfully validated this restore testing. And then once it's complete, it has updated the status to successful. In a situation where the validation status is not complete, what you see is something like this. I have a, another restore testing job that had run before. So for the validation status, instead of successful now, you will see timed out. And here is SNS validation that I have received. I can see that restore testing job status is complete and validation status is successful. With that, I'm done with this demo. Thank you for watching.